Hi there, welcome to Employment Hour in 30. Welcome back. If you're uh, joining us for more than the second time, and if it's the first time, well, welcome. This is a show where we talk about employment law and everything about your job and your workplace, the important stuff in life. I'm John Scholes. He's Lior Sanfiru. He has all the knowledge, and I just kind of keep this thing on the rails. I am the Captain Steubing of this show, <laughs> I guess you could say. Uh, we got lots to talk about today. We'll take some uh, phone calls from our radio show. By the way, you can go to employmenthourtv.ca, listen to podcasts, find out where you can listen to the radio show, and contact any time for Lior, one 855 821 5900 help and employment lawyer Dot ca. Uh, we'll talk about the severance pay calculator, which is an amazing tool, which well over half it, we got to get a current count. Last time it was 550,000 people have used this thing. It tells you how much severance you, uh, severance you should be getting. The real number, we'll get to that later on the show, but we always start with some things that have happened around the firm and on your desk. We call it the week that was. What is going on with you? Thank you, Captain Steubing. Thank you. I appreciate Bald, that. You know, it's working. <laughs> Close enough. Well, it's, uh, it's been another great opportunity to be here and to talk to yep. some people about workplace rights and employment law. And I, I take that very seriously because jobs, workplace rights, is a serious topic. It's a, it's a topic that people need to know about because we all have jobs. We all work. And it would be great to say, oh, it's all perfect. We never have an issue. For most people in, the li in your lifetime of work, you're going to have some problems. You're going to have some questions. You're going to have things that don't go your way. And you need to know what to do in those situations. You can't let, that, let it fester, and you can't make assumptions about your rights. And that's what we're here to do this week and every week, to talk about those workplace rights, to answer questions, to help demystify sure. this area of law. So if you have a question about your workplace rights, tune in. We'll probably cover it today. If we don't, Call me at the office, email me, happy to answer questions. There's no such thing as a bad question. And let to, to, start off, uh, to start us off, one situation that came across my desk where I think our, uh, our viewers here are going to find interesting. Uh, I spoke with a gentleman who found himself in a bit of a weird situation. He didn't know what to do. He was sick for a few days, nothing major, but he had to be off work for a few days. And uh, he went to his doctor uh, and he provided a doctor's note to his employer when he came back saying that he was sick. He wanted to make sure that his employer knew that he wasn't off because he wanted to play golf. He was off because he was sick. Well, a couple of hours later, his employer knocks on his office door and asks him to come to a meeting. And they say, well, you gave us a note from a walk-in clinic. That's not good enough. We need you to go to your family doctor. That's number one. And number two, the note, only, the only thing it says is that you can't work. We need to know why. We oh. need to know what the medical issue was. So we need you to go to a family doctor and we need you to tell us why you couldn't work, not just that you were sick, not good enough. Well, he was upset. He said, first of all, I can't even go to see my family doctor. It's going to take me a while to get an appointment. And why should I have to tell you what my medical condition is? He called me. He wanted to know, is that right? Can they ask me those questions and what do I do? So let's be very clear here, John. There's, there's, no, um, there's really no two ways about this. Uh, you're, you can go to whatever doctor you want if you're sick. You don't have to go to your family doctor or a specialist. You can go to a walk-in clinic. Sure. And, and if you get a note from a walk-in clinic, that's just as good. Your employer can't do anything about it. They can't insist you go to a different doctor. That's nonsense. And beyond that, you're... You don't have any obligation at all to tell your employer what your condition is, why you miss work. The only thing your employer is allowed to ask you is, can you work and can you not? Is there a medical condition or is there something else? They can't ask what the medical condition is. Is it a bad back? Is it insomnia? Depression, is it depression whatever. Or is it yeah. the flu? Yeah. They can't ask that. It's irrelevant. So this employer is completely overreaching. So what I told them is, no, you tell them, my note is fine, and I'm not going to provide you with anything else. They can't punish him. They can't let him go. They can't do anything. And if they do, that could be a human rights violation. That could become a constructive dismissal in certain situations. So I'm bringing this up here today to, to remind everyone that you know, sometimes you are sick. And if you get a note from a walk-in clinic, that's fine. You don't have to tell your employer why you're sick. You don't have to tell your employer what the medical condition is. And your employer can't even ask. If there's any problems, any issues, now you know. And if there really is a concern, call me or email me and we can discuss it. So to simplify it, your, your workplace is allowed to ask prognosis, not diagnosis, right? Prognosis means what, what is expected from yeah. this When employee. will you be off? Is How he going to be off for a yeah. certain period of time? Does he need accommodation? Okay. Yeah. Diagnosis is what is the medical condition? No, you can't ask for diagnosis. Prognosis is fine. And again, if the employer overreaches uh, or, or really makes demands that they're not allowed to make, then that's a problem. You can call me at that point. Was it because it was a clinic doctor, which is still a, a GP, a licensed medical practitioner, you know? Yeah. And that's is what that I mean. why? It's not like he asked this uh, Bob, who's a car mechanic, to yeah. give him a doctor's note, right? That, that would make it a bit silly. Yeah. It's a doctor. It's a doctor that examined him, that concluded that he can't work. 
that's all you need. Walk-in clinic works just fine. Uh, and, and don't ever feel the pressure that you have to do something else. Absolutely not. 1-855-821-5900. Help at employmentlawyer.ca or employmenthourtv.ca. You want to go there. A good resource for uh, catching the podcast and places where you can find our radio show, which we've been doing for about six, six plus years now. Take a ton of phone calls on the show. We play them back on this show and get some opinion on them. We'll get to one. I'm with a job that I absolutely love. I've mm -hmm. been there for six years. I'm actually one of their top producers in sales. I have been hired when I first started on a commission base only. They told us two weeks ago they're changing our pay structure to 30000 a year and hardly anything for commission. I'm going to be losing almost 30000 a year. What are my rights? If I quit to find another job, am I allowed severance? That's a big sting. It is a huge thing. Yeah. And, you know, I, I started the show by talking about the fact that you know sometimes things don't go well at work so clearly she's someone that has a good job she loves her job yep. she's saying that and she's thinking I'm gonna work there forever not gonna be any problems and then all of a sudden something happens that changes that dynamic and that's why you need to understand your rights so, so it's not complicated from a legal standpoint her employer is not allowed to change her compensation in this way they're not allowed to make changes that are gonna cost her in this case she says thirty thousand dollars by the way even if it was a lot less than that they still couldn't do yep. it, okay? It's a big deal. So, no, they can't do that. That results in what we call a constructive dismissal. Constructive dismissal is when your employer changes the terms of your employment and you don't accept that. That gives you the right to leave with your full severance. So she has a very simple, well, maybe not simple, but a clear choice that she has to make. She can accept this change and continue working, and she's going to make less money. Her compensation structure is going to be different. That's her call. Or she can say, no, I am not accepting this change, and she can leave and get her full severance. Now, based on her age, position, and length of employment, she's going to be owed a certain amount, uh, and those are her options. Now, the, the next question is always is, well, what do I stand to gain? How much right. would I actually get? So what I've done is I've taken some of the information, I plugged it into the severancepaycalculator.com website so that we can see what she'd actually be owed. So let's, let's look at what that gave us. So she's in a sales position, six years of employment. I picked 50 years old as an age, just as an example. So obviously, they haven't given her any severance, but if she leaves, severance calculator correctly shows that she'd be owed eight months' pay in terms of her severance uh, as part of a constructive dismissal. So eight months' pay. Uh, so that's what's at stake for her. And one of the things she, I would always tell her is if she accepts this change, if she says, I'll, I'll be the good team player, I'll, I'll be the good soldier. I'll take the hit. I'll take the hit for the yep. team, and I'll take that, that pay cut. Well, she's given them the right to do it again. And the next time they reduce it by another 30% or $30,000, she won't be able to do anything. That's why it's so important when your employer changes the terms of your employment to take a stand. You don't want to kick that door or let your employer kick that door wide open because the next time they do something about it, you may be stuck. That eight-month calculation would be fairly simple for somebody in, say, a salary position where the, uh, the, the pay over years could be consistent. But sales position could be like this. How do you calculate it? Absolutely. So she's probably doesn't make the same amount every year. So what happens in the, in the sales position or whenever your compensation varies, we simply look at an average. Mm -hmm. So she, we know she's been there for six years. We'll probably look at a three-year average. So see over the last three years what your compensation was. And if an average was $80,000, then $80,000 is the figure we're going to use to calculate her severance. Very simple. If your salary is 80 and that's all you have, then it's simple. If your compensation varies, some years it's high, some years it's a bit lower, no problem. We look at an average and you still get severance. EmploymentHourTV.ca is the resource to find the radio show and all these phone calls we like to play on the air. Let's get to number two. I've had an issue at work with being harassed by a coworker. The employee's already been warned in the past. I had reported it to HR. However, they didn't take it seriously. Currently, I'm on medical leave as directed by my doctors, and I'm not getting paid right now. I have asked for work accommodation, and what they came back to me was to move me literally three feet. <laughs> it won't solve the, the problem. I'm thinking it's time for me to resign. Yeah, 2018, this is not the environment, especially where you want to be just going, eh. No, eh. no, absolutely. Like, no, oh my God, what do I, this is such a, a bad idea for an employer to ignore it or to sweep it under the rug or to hope that the problem is going to go away on its own. When it comes to workplace harassment, problems don't solve itself. It's up to the employer to solve that problem when it becomes aware. It's up to the employee to inform their employer about the issue, and the employer may not necessarily be expected to know what's happening. But once you go to your employer and you're saying, I am being harassed, 
I'm being mistreated. Your employer, number one, has to investigate it, and then if it's determined that it's, it's happened, they have to fix it. They have to fix that problem. And if this employer won't fix the problem, if they say, well, you know, instead of working two feet away, we'll put you three feet away, that's not going to do it. There's going to be, there's going to have to be other measures that are available to the employer to fix that problem. Maybe it's disciplining someone. Maybe it's putting them on different floors. Maybe it's something completely different. But you can't ignore the problem when it comes to workplace harassment. So what does this mean for her? If she tried to get this resolved, yep. if she gave them the chance, and they won't do it, and she's still being mistreated or harassed or put in this poisoned work environment, she can treat that as a constructive dismissal. We talked about constructive dismissal before. It applies the same thing when you're being harassed. Rest. Once the work environment is created that doesn't allow you to continue working anymore, you can treat that as a termination and get your severance. And I think that's a much better option than just continuing to suffer, to continue to be harassed. Once you've given your employer the opportunity, if they don't take that opportunity, and they should be taking that opportunity, you can treat that potentially as a constructive dismissal. If that happens, call me right away. Full severance number one in that case, and also the potential of human rights damages, correct? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Human rights damages and your full severance, potentially even additional severance because of the employer's mistreatment or bad faith treatment. So it's a big liability for the employer. And what I don't want people to do is just to think it's going to get better. I've seen so many people go off on disability leave because they, they were in that poison work environment yeah. for too long. Don't let that happen to you. 1-855-821-5900 is the contact number. You know, we like to bring a topic up each week at about four or five talking points. I ask you the question, you simply answer them. These are things that people ask all the time through email and phone calls as well. This one kind of dovetails nicely in the last phone call. And uh, for today, we're gonna, today we're going to do, uh, you can't be let go from your job, dot, 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 for these simple reasons, right? Because you get a list every week on the phone calls and people contacting you, right? And, and you know, this is the exception to the rule. The right. main rule, as you know, we've talked on the show before, is you generally can be let go for most reasons as, as long, long as. as you get severance. So if your uh, boss lets you go because they want to hire their cousin instead of you, that's not nice, but they are allowed to do that if they pay you severance. So for most cases, you can be let go, but there are circumstances where you're not even allowed to be let go, even if you do get severance. It will be illegal. So what we want to cover in this uh, next couple minutes here is some of those situations where you cannot be let go legally. First one, discriminatory reasons. Absolutely. So if yep. you're let go because of your age, because of your ethnicity, because of the fact that you're having a baby, that's discrimination. You cannot be let go for that, even if your employer is willing to pay you a nice, big, fat severance check. You cannot be let go. Uh, that's a human rights violation, and that's a very, very basic right that we have not to be discriminated against. So age, ethnicity, disability, medical condition, all those things and more are illegal grounds to let you go, to fire you, to mistreat you, to discipline you. And if that happens, that's illegal. We really need to have a serious discussion then. When you cannot be let go from your job for these reasons, this goes back to the week that was we had at the start, and that's because you're sick and cannot work. Yes. Very, you know, kind of flows from the first one we talked about. It's yep. a form of discrimination. Right. If you have a serious medical condition, if you have a disability, you cannot be let go even if you have to be off work for a long period of time. Maybe you have to have surgery or uh, other treatment, and you're going to be off for a month or two or six or a year. That's fine. You cannot be let go because of that. If you are let go, that's a human rights violation. That's illegal. So I want everyone to understand that when you're sick, your job, your priority should be to get better. You shouldn't have to worry about an employer letting you go, mistreating you, or giving you a hard time. Your employer's only obligation is to give you that time and to take you, take you back when you're ready to come back to work. So you cannot be let go because of a medical condition. Again, that's a human rights violation. Is it true that employers sometimes get tripped up on this particular point because they confuse having sick days with sick leave, right? <laughs> sick days really only refers to how many days your employer is going to pay you, you right. pay you while you're off. Sick leave is different. Sick leave is time that you need to be off while you're getting better, even if it's unpaid. So your employer may have a policy that says we have five sick day policy. That's great. That means that they'll pay you when you're sick for up to five days. But what happens if you need 50 days to be off work? Right. All that means is for the after the five days, you won't get paid, at least not by your employer. You may qualify, by the way, for short-term disability. You may also qualify for EI sickness benefits. Yep. But you cannot confuse the idea of a sick day policy with the ability to be off work while you're sick. We're talking about situations where you cannot be let go from your job. This one's a big one as well because you have a drug, alcohol, or abuse problem, right? And that ties into the previous point. Yep. 
a uh, drug problem, an alcohol problem, is considered a disability. Yeah. Okay, so if you're struggling with the drug addiction, uh, if you're an alcoholic, and because of that, uh, you, you, you know, your performance at work gets uh, impacted, you cannot be let go. That's illegal. That's a human rights violation. So make sure if you are struggling, if it's impacting your work, as hard as it is, you should still tell your employer. Because your employer may not know. They may think you're just doing a bad job for no reason. So if there's an underlying, underlying medical condition, even if it's drug or alcohol related, your employer should know about that. And at that point, they can't let you go. They have to accommodate you, either uh, be more understanding or potentially give you time off to get better. You cannot be let go because of drug or alcohol problems. You know, our second phone call a few minutes ago, we talked about workplace harassment. And there's another one exactly where you can't be let go from your job. And that's if you complain about the harassment. Yes. If you complain about workplace harassment, if you raise an allegation, if you file a complaint, you cannot, and I cannot overemphasize this, you cannot be fired because of that, okay? It's illegal. Uh, it's a violation of the Occupational Health and Safety Act. It's a, a violation of the Employment Standards Act, potentially a violation of the Human Rights Code. It's a bad thing. Our legal system is such that it encourages people to deal with workplace harassment, to go to their employer, to file a complaint, to try to fix that problem. So you should never, ever have to worry that just because you file a harassment complaint, just because you raise that issue, you can be fired. And by the way, you may have filed a harassment complaint, and even if you can't prove it, some people say, well, what if I can't prove it? They'll fire me then. No. Once you raise that complaint, even if you can't prove it, even if there's no way to, to document it, to you still cannot be fired. That would be completely illegal. Situations where you cannot be let go from your job, another one is for trying to enforce your rights in the workplace. Absolutely. So overtime. I didn't get overtime. Right. Employer pay me. I didn't get my vacation pay. Employer pay me my vacation pay. You're standing up for your rights. You cannot be fired for that. That, that would be what we call a reprisal. Right. A reprisal is a situation where you get punished, fired, disciplined, whatever it is, mm -hmm. because you're standing up for your rights that's illegal so you should always have the confidence that if you're asking questions about your legal rights if you're trying to pursue your legal rights that you will not be punished even if it turns out that you were wrong even if it turns out that you were not owed overtime or vacation pay you still cannot be punished for asking for for complaining for trying to get that compensation you have a right to stand up and to enforce your rights we'll take a, a short break what do you say coming up we'll talk about how to react to inadequate severance offer and of course the severance pay calculator is just ahead lots more employment Employment Hour 30 is on the way. Stick around. Lost your job? Employment law myth number five. There's no point in calling a lawyer because my employer treated me fairly. Fact. Over 90% of people are offered much less than they are owed. Always go to employmentlawyer.ca and check with the employment lawyer first. Lost your job? Find out how much severance you're owed right now. Severancepaycalculator.com. Accurate, anonymous, and free. Severancepaycalculator.com. Lost your job? Employment law myth number seven. Involving an employment lawyer is expensive. Fact. In most cases, fees are nominal, and the employer will ultimately cover the fees. Always go to employmentlawyer.ca and check with the employment lawyer first. Hey, welcome back to Employment Hour in 30. It's uh, John Scholes, Lior Sanfiro to contact 1-855-821-5900 is the number. This is the part of the show where we talk about a, uh, well, you call it a handy dandy tool. It's an online tool. It's called the Severance Pay Calculator. You can go there, severancepaycalculator.com. Tell me about it. Severancepaycalculator.com, well, the name kind of says it all. It calculates the amount of severance that you're owed. It shows you what you're owed if you lost your job. Once you go to severancepaycalculator.com, you'll see a couple of questions there. They'll ask you what your job is how long you've worked, your age. And once you've answered those questions, it's going to tell you what severance is actually owed to you, whether it's six months, 12 months, 24 months. Spoiler alert, it's not a yep. week's pay for every year or two weeks' pay or anything other, uh, any, any formula like that. It's based on those factors. And I, I created it because so many people every day accept a lot less than their own. And I'm not talking about accepting eight weeks severance when it should be 10 weeks. I'm talking about accepting eight weeks when it should be eight months. So go to severancepaycalculator.com. It's free. It's anonymous. There's no strings at that. You couldn't pay for it if you tried. And by going there, you'll have that information, even if you haven't lost your job. Even if you're not even worried about losing your job, you should still have that information. If you know your, your mother or your friend lost their job, tell them to go to severancepaycalculator.com. You have to be curious as to how much you're actually owed. 
So check it out right now. No reason not to make that the very first place you go to if you lost your job. It takes about 30 seconds. It's absolutely free as well. And at the bottom, if you want to contact you or a member of Lior's team, there's a contact button uh, at the bottom as, as well. One of our viewers writes in, give an example here. She says, or at least 58-year-old Kelly, a life insurance advisor for 18 years. She was let go after an honest mistake. HR said they were giving her a quote-unquote generous 18-week severance package. She thinks she's owed more, but if, uh, she's afraid she'll lose the offer that's on the table if she tries to negotiate. Very common situation. Yep. That's why we brought it up here. First of all, if she made a mistake, that doesn't mean she can be let go without severance. She gets her full severance. The only time you can be let go without your severance is if you did something awful, something terrible. In most cases, that doesn't happen, okay? So the real question is, after... Uh, her, uh, her 18 years, what does she get? Well, let's plug that, plug that into the severancepaycalculator.com website and let's find out exactly. So she's in a professional role. She's uh, 58 years old, 18 years of service. Remember, she was only offered 18 weeks yep. pay. Well, this is why I tell people to go to severancepaycalculator.com because as you can see on the screen right now, she gets 18 to 24 months, months pay. Yep. 18 to 24 months. So I don't know how much money she's making a year, but I can assure you that the difference between 18 weeks and 18 months is going to be at least tens of thousands of dollars and it can be into the six figures as well. So they're probably putting pressure on her and that's very common to accept this by a deadline. Don't worry about that deadline. If I owed you $100 and I told you I'll only pay you $10, but you have to accept this by tomorrow, no. you'd laugh at me. And that should be, frankly, the reaction here. If she's on 18 months pay and they offer her 18 weeks, uh, she, should, she should chuckle. She should say thanks, but no thanks. And she should give me a call. So don't be scared to negotiate is what you're saying. They expect it half the time for you to come back. Well, right? They're hoping to get away with it, right. but they're not surprised when they don't. Yeah. Because, again, she's owed more. And I don't decide this. I, I want to emphasize this. When I say you're owed 18 months severance, 24 months severance, this is not my opinion. This is not my hope. This is what the law provides. So if the law says you should have 18 months severance, why on earth would you accept anything less than that? EmploymentHourTV.ca is where you want to go to catch our radio show and podcasts of that show as well. You can call into the radio show when you find a station that suits your needs. We'll get to a phone call from the show now. I got laid off. I worked pretty much full time for them from June up until Christmas. And then at Christmas, they got really slow. And then January is like, yeah, nothing's really coming. I should probably just lay you off. Um, and I was just wondering if there's any severance owed at all when you're laid off or if it's, they can just sort of say, okay, you're laid off and that's it. I love those two words. Yeah, lay off. Laid off. Yeah. And, and, you know, oftentimes when an employer wants, doesn't necessarily think about letting someone go, they think, well, business is slow. We're going to lay you off temporarily. Mm -hmm. We're going to lay you off. And hopefully in a month, in two, six months, business picks up. We'll call you back to work. Okay, the problem with that is that in the eyes of the law, a layoff, a temporary layoff, is a termination. In other words, your employer doesn't have the right to try to suspend your employment for that period of time. Sure. They don't. So you have the choice. You can choose to accept the layoff, sit at home and hope that at some point they'll call you back, or you can treat that as a termination and get your severance right now. A temporary layoff in most cases is a termination. So if this is uh, the first time he's been laid off supposedly temporarily, there's no history created in the past, he can say, no, thanks, but no thanks. I'm going to take my severance and I'm going to go look for another job. So when you've been put in a temporary layoff, you don't just have to sit at home without income. You can get your severance right now. And again, you can go to severancepaycalculator.com to find out how much that would be and get that severance and move on from there. When your temporary replacement becomes permanent, that's coming up as we go into a break here. 1-855-821-5900 and employmenthourtv.ca as well. Lots more Employment Hour 30s coming up. Lost your job? Employment law myth number nine. I can just call the labor board instead of a lawyer. Fact, the labor board cannot help an employee get their full entitlements. Always go to employmentlawyer.ca and check with the employment lawyer first. Lost your job? Find out how much severance you're owed right now. SeverancePayCalculator.com. Accurate, anonymous, and free. SeverancePayCalculator.com. Lost your job? Employment law myth number five. There's no point in calling a lawyer because my employer treated me fairly. Fact, over 90% of people are offered much less than they are owed. Always go to EmploymentLawyer.ca and check with the employment lawyer first.
Hey, welcome back to Employment Hour and 30. Anytime you want to reach out and get a contact or at least get a hold of Lior, 1-855-821-5900. There's also help at employmentlawyer.ca. The radio show is where you go, employmenthourtv.ca. You can podcast it as well. Been doing that for about six years, taking uh, countless number of phone calls. Interesting stuff. People want to know. They need the knowledge. We're going to play a phone call for you now again, and I'm going to get you to comment on it, Lior. So I've been working for this company for the past 10 years. I went on parental leave, and the day I got back, they let me go, saying, according to restructuring, they had to let me go. Well, they, they had some restructuring. They let go a couple of people in the company. But my position was temporarily like, filled by another person, Okay. he stayed on. Eesh. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. So we've talked about maternity leave. The same thing happens with paternity leave. Sure. If you're a father that takes time off to spend with your new, a newborn child, you have the same rights as a, as a mother would, and specifically the right to your job back. You cannot be let go because you took a paternity, a paternity leave. You cannot be let go. You cannot be punished. You cannot be, have your salary reduced. You cannot be demoted. So in most cases, the company would say, well, we let you go, but it's completely unrelated to your paternity leave, so we haven't done anything wrong. Well, in this case, we know it's wrong. How do we know? Because they hired a replacement, they and going. they kept that replacement. You can't do that, okay? You can't do that if it's a maternity leave. It's, if it's a paternity leave, you cannot do that. So what does this mean? This means that this, uh, this is potentially a human rights violation. It's a violation of the Employment Standards Act. In other words, it's illegal. Yes. So not only is he owed severance, of course he's owed severance, but he could be owed other damages as well under the Human Rights Code, et cetera. That company, what the company did is illegal, and I want everyone to understand that you're, if you're off on a leave, uh, certainly a parental leave, if, if your replacement is kept on instead of you, that's illegal. It's almost always going to be illegal. You cannot have that happen to you. If that happens to you, you know now that that's wrong. Now, we don't know yet what the human rights damages will be because it depends on a number of things, but sure. let's talk about his severance. We talked in the previous segment about the severancepaycalculator.com website. So let's take his information, I guess, just to show our viewers how this works, and let's plug that into the severancepaycalculator.com site. So 10 years of service, I'm going to say he's in his 30s, he's in a technical position. He's owed 9 to 12 months wow. of severance. So 9 to 12 months, that's what they would have to pay him, and that's an addition John, exactly. to any human rights damages that he could be owed. That's how easy it is. It takes literally seconds to do this. Uh, and, and remember what I said about parental leave. Uh, TerminationQuestions.com, a great resource. You can also go to TerminationQuestions.com. I want to take the last couple of minutes we have here this morning and get to one. I'll read it to you, and I'll answer it quickly before we wrap it. Is, uh, I was just told this week that I have to sign a new employment agreement and uh, that if I don't sign it in one week, I will be fired. What can I do? <laughs> well, the, the only reason an existing employee is going to be asked to sign a new employment agreement is because it's better for the employer. Sure. And I have a, obviously I haven't seen this document, but I can almost assure you, I've been doing this for a long time, that there are going to be terms in that agreement that are going to be very bad for the employee. For example, something that limits their future severance. That could cost them tens of thousands of dollars. Or there could be a term that gives the company the right to change your job and change your compensation. Okay. Or location. Yeah. It's a bad, bad idea. Yeah. So no, unless of course this is a better agreement, spoiler alert, it's not, but unless it's a better agreement, why would you sign it? So you can say no thanks, but no thanks. I'm not going to sign it. You cannot be punished for not signing an agreement. And by the way, even if it was a better agreement, you still don't have an obligation to sign it. You, you don't. You have a right to continue in your job with the, the terms that you currently have. Your company can change those terms. So if you're, they want you to sign an agreement, if that agreement doesn't suit your needs, it doesn't provide you with better terms, if it's against your interest, say no. You cannot be punished. Any hard time, if they try to let you go, if they consider you to have resigned, which is nonsense, Wrong. call me, that's illegal. Don't sign something that gives away your rights. If you do sign it, they have to give you something, correct? They do, but sometimes that may not be worthwhile. Right. They say, okay, we'll give you a $100 bonus, <laughs> but why would you take that just to limit tens of thousands of dollars of future severance? Yeah. Bad idea. Not good overall. A lot of stuff to take in here, so we'll, uh, we'll take it for this week. And anytime you need contact, Lior, really simple, so many ways. Again, terminationquestions.com, 1-855-821-5900. There is also help at employmentlawyer.ca. I know a lot to take in, but there's one more. Severancepaycalculator.com. Never, ever sign anything. You can look at it, make a paper airplane out of it, laugh at it, but don't sign it until you call and contact Lior. Till next time, Employment Hour in 30.
Closed captioning of this program is brought to you in part by severancepaycalculator.com. Find out how much you are owed right now. severancepaycalculator.com.